Welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul and it's nice to see you all again, especially people who I've never seen before. If it's your first time, a very, very warm welcome. And all my returning visitors, nice to see you too. Well, today uh, is right in the middle of the asparagus season here and I have a wonderful bunch of asparagus to go at. These were picked only this morning and they couldn't be any fresher. I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do with them quickly without a lot of fuss. Make a nice lunch, a nice breakfast, a nice afternoon snack, or you can make them into a meal. I will be showing you two or three different things, <clears throat> but first of all, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to all those people who've ass uh, assisted me uh, by donating to my website and to my video channel. People who have donated on PayPal and also on um, a Patreon. I thank you very, very much indeed. And I will be putting a list of people up later on of all my new contributors. And thank you very much. Well, here we go. This is the asparagus. Now for this first little recipe, uh, I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, probably six, probably eight, probably eight spears of asparagus. Now, <clears throat> the first thing you have to do with asparagus is to get rid of this woody end piece here. This is very, very woody. And I've watched lots and lots of chefs and cooks and things on television and the very first thing they do is get a knife and cut them straight off like that. Well I'm not going to do that, I'm going to show you a different way of finding out which is the stringy bit and which is the tender bit. First of all we take one of the spears and I'll show you. Just gently into the camera view for you, just gently start at the rough end and bend it like that and as soon as you get to where the asparagus is tender it'll snap just like that. That's the woody bit, that's the tender bit, that's what we're looking for now. Those two pieces. I can't find, there we are, I want to get, you, get into the camera shot. So I'll do that again, just gently, keep going like that, moving up the stem until all of a sudden you find it will just snap off. There we are. That means you've got the woody bit there and that's the tender bit you're left with. Just go through doing that with all the pieces that you're going to use. That way you're not cutting off too much and you're not leaving any of the stringy bits on your edible piece. There we go. Just keep moving up gently up the stem, bending it, and there it goes. So that's all the pieces I'm going to use for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my baking sheet like this. Gently. Just lay them on the baking sheet and then I'm going to brush them gently with a little olive oil. You don't need to put a lot on, it's just really to help them along. There we go. Now these are going to go in the oven for about eight minutes that's all. So for this we're going to need some bread. I'm just going to use two pieces from a long loaf like that. This is sourdough bread I'm using but you can use any bread you want. Okay so I'm going to put that to one side. Just get a, something to stand the hot tray on. There we are. That's nice and tender now. I 
And what we need to do is to very simply, it's a bit hot, two, three, you can put more on if you wish, oops, and don't forget, if you want this softer, I like a crunch with my asparagus, if you want it softer, just leave it in the oven a little bit longer. I'm putting four pieces on each, just like that. I move the hot tray. Oops. What I need to do now is put the parmesan on. So I'll just move those to a plate. And I'm going to sprinkle on the parmesan. That's all. I don't need to do anything more. And I'm going to just put a little salt, not much because of the parmesan, just a little salt and a little black pepper. Mmm. That really is delicious. So the next one is we're going to have asparagus with poached egg, which is a very, very nice little dish. So we'll first of all take the asparagus, which I've prepared, take the rough ends off, and we'll pop it in the pan and just blanch it for about three minutes. drop it in the pan, make sure they're not overlapping or sitting in the water and we just need to blanch that now for about three minutes that's all. Okay, the three minutes are up now, so we'll turn the heat off and we'll take these asparagus out and we'll pop them onto a little kitchen paper just to drain off any water because we don't want them too wet. I think you'll agree they do look quite attractive like that. Next we come to the poached egg. Now, poaching an egg is either very, very simple or very, very complicated. I like to do it one particular way and I find it's foolproof, really. It's how I like them done. So I'll go over to the stove and what I've done is... So what we've got here is a pan of water that I've brought to the boil and turned it down to a simmer. We don't want it boiling very, very hard. And I'm going to add to that a tablespoon of white wine vinegar, just like that. Now I'm going to get the spoon and I'm going to boil around the water and get it working into a vortex, like a whirlpool, like that. And then I'm going to drop the egg into the middle, like that. And I'm just going to leave that there, and I, for my liking, three and a half minutes is what I like. Three and a half minutes. So we'll leave that for three and a half minutes, and then I'll take it out. Now what we don't want, we don't want the water boiling frantically because that way it will break the egg white up and it'll look like a, a spider's web. We don't want anything like that. We want a nice tight uh, white of the, uh, of the egg and a nice creamy yolk. The white should be cooked and the edge of the yolk should be just cooked and all the middle should be nice and creamy. And that mixed with the asparagus 
is absolutely delightful. Now some people like to take out the egg and drop it onto kitchen paper to drain off any liquid. I don't like to do that because invariably it sticks to the paper and you get a terrible mess. I like to just take it out, let it drain gently like that and then I'm going to put it straight on top of the asparagus like that. And I think you will agree that is very, very nice. All it needs now is a little salt and pepper and we'll have a look inside. I'll just put the salt and pepper on, just a very tiny amount. And for this I'm using white pepper, which I prefer on eggs, white pepper. There we are. And we're going to open this now and let you have a look inside the egg. There we are. Beautifully cooked. The egg is, the white is perfectly cooked. That really is delicious and in fact it's so nice before I do any more filming I'm going to finish the whole lot. I hope you try it. I know you'll enjoy it. See you soon. Well here as promised are a list of my new um, Patreon and PayPal subscribers. Uh, we have Marion Worley, Foodie2, David Price, Pauline Harris, Scotty Seven, Nadine Seeley, Ron York, Mia Zhang, Jay Rooney, and Celia R. And a big thank you to all of you and everyone who's uh, contributed in the past. It really helps. Every penny you donate to me goes straight into making these new videos. Thank you very much indeed. Well, here we are with the next piece now. Here we've got some asparagus, which I have taken the woody bits off the bottom, and I've blanched it in hot boiling salted water for just three minutes. I'm also going to use some Hamon Serrano. Uh, you could also use the parma ham, which is the Italian version of this. This is Spanish. Okay, it's a dry cured ham. Okay, a piece of the ham. And we're going to take the plastic off. And all I'm going to do is to roll the ha the. Uh, asparagus in the ham. Just It's stuck on the plastic, it's like that to stop it all sticking together. We're just going to roll it like that gently, if you can see that. I think you can see that okay. It's rolled inside. And we're going to place that onto a baking sheet just like we did before it's just going to go onto the baking sheet like this i'll do the rest of them and then i'll get them in the oven i'll show you what happens next okay there we go just one more to do and this really is a delightful either a starter or a little afternoon snack. It certainly makes a good starter for a meal as this. There we go. Now if you wanted to, you can just put them in the oven like that. Or you can spread, spread a little olive oil on them. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little parmesan and I'm just going to grate a bit of parmesan 
just along the top like that. Just gently. It doesn't matter if some goes into the tin because we've got some foil in there, it won't make any difference. There we go, just one more there. Just a nice little bit of hammer up um, cheese on top of there and that's going to go into the oven now for about 8 minutes. 8 minutes at about 180. Okay, I'll put those in the oven and I'll come back and show you when they're ready. And here we are, out of the oven, all ready, with a nice bit of crusty bread, and they really will make a very, very nice starter to a meal, just a couple of those, or if you want to make a, a meal of it uh, with a little salad or something like that, that's what you need. So the next thing we're going to make is some asparagus soup. So I'll see you in a moment. Right, now what we're going to do next is make the soup. This is a very simple asparagus soup. There are many, many ways to make asparagus soup. A lot of them quite complicated, which is quite unnecessary. What we're going to do here today is I'm going to use an onion, some asparagus, a little flour to thicken it, and some chicken stock and a touch of cream at the end of it. That's what we're going to do. So I'll go over to the stove now and we'll get started. So here we are. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pop in the butter. Pop in the butter. And as soon as that starts melting, we're going to throw in the chopped onion. Give that a stir around. Now all we're needing going to do with this, we're not going to brown this at all. We're going to be on a very low heat, we're only going to soften it. Okay? Now the next thing I've got is 500 grams of asparagus. Now I've cut it into small pieces, but what I also did was I saved a few of the tips that you can see there just for decoration for later on. I'll just show you. So now the asparagus is going in with the onion and the butter. That's going to go on a very low heat now, and I'm going to pop a little. I'm going to leave that for about five minutes. Now they're just starting to soften a little now. So the next thing I'm going to add into there is a rounded tablespoon of plain flour. Now some people um, like to thicken their soups with potato. I don't mind doing it with some things, but to my mind it finishes up like a chowder rather than uh, a nice smooth soup. So that's what I'm going to do here. Next. I'm going to turn up the heat slightly and we're going to pop in the chicken stock. Now you can use vegetable stock, you can use in like it doesn't matter whether you use fresh stock that you've made yourself, whether it's a carton or a jar from the supermarket or from a stock cube, it makes no difference. If you use a stock cube, when you come to add the salt and pepper, be very careful with the salt because they all contain quite a bit of salt to do shop bought stock cubes. Okay? That's going in next. Now I'm going to turn that right up now and bring it to the boil. Once it's to the boil, 
we're going to turn it down to a simmer and leave it for about 20-25 minutes. So the 20 minutes is up now and here on the bench I've got the pot of the asparagus and the onion. The first thing we're going to do is to put in some salt and pepper. Don't forget what I said, if you've used a stock cube, go easy on the salt because they all contain a lot of salt. I'm using white, uh, black pepper and ordinary table salt, that's all I'm using. And we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of double cream, that's all. And then I'm going to blend it. Now you can use it in a, uh, a food processor, blender, or whatever you want. I'm trying this out today. stayed beautiful and green. Now don't forget if you want it any thicker than this just add a little more flour. If you want it, don't want it too thick add less. I like it just like it is now. I'll show you in a moment. So this is the consistency. I like it. I haven't had a taste yet, I might need to put a bit more salt and pepper in, but I'll taste it now. No, that is perfect. So what we're going to do is we'll serve some in the bowl. Like this. Just move the soup bar pot. My gloves. And then I did tell you I saved some of these little tips just to put in as a little extra. They're sinking because mine isn't too thick, but it doesn't matter. You can put a little more cream on if you want. If you want to put, if you'd like to put, um, just get a clean spoon. If you want to put a little more cream like this round, that's entirely up to you. But there it is, beautiful green soup, and it tastes absolutely delightful. Well. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, go down below, give it a thumbs up, leave some comments or questions or suggestions, whatever you like. I do read every one of them and try to answer as many as I possibly can. Okay? If you haven't subscribed, if you press the subscribe button underneath, then and the little bell at the side, YouTube will tell you every time uh, you, you, uh, you, I put up a new video. And just as it's some breaking news today, I've just learned from YouTube, I now today have 30,000 subscribers, which I can't believe. So, it's Mr. Paul saying bye for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye!